Shalom Elohim, peace be on you, Yisrael, Yahonathan, Dawit, with with you humbly so On a video, uh, number 49 of the Bimil Altar, Shali, in his own words, series This will be released on November the 5th, 2023, of the year of their Lord um, So like I said, this is video number 48 of the series We're going to this book Directly from the words of Yahweh, Shua himself, so as not to get anything twisted what he is saying about what he wants us to know, about what we need to know today. And what we don't need to know are the distractions that are going on in the Middle East. We talked about this the last couple of weeks. We know that Yah came for his remnant, Yisrael. He came for his remnant because Yisrael is impoverished. And Israel has been impoverished by the by the beast and how and the beast is a government system that deals with exchange of goods via money and even the temple access is via money at the time of Yahweh sure we have here he's going up against the beast which has access to his father via the temple and in that you need money Yahweh sure is the light but he sent us out for the Gentiles to teach this new covenant. So we got to get it right. He is the light of the world and we are the light of the world, but we are reflecting his light. And so we have to get this right. He is the law. We need to teach him. This ministry focuses on Yahweh Shua HaMashiach and not the things of the world that divides us as people. We're divided over False identifiers such as color and race, which divides us. And Yahweh Shua does not divide us based on that. He divides us on one thing, his word. Doesn't matter what your so-called color is or sex or anything, you either receive him or you don't. Temple leaders didn't get it because they were stiff-necked because they know that if Yahweh Shua was right in what he was saying, and he was, that they will be eliminated. There will be no need for them. This is why they fought hard against him. And they didn't get, and I don't think you're getting, the parable of the lost sheep. The whole beginning of Moshe getting this word, this Torah from, from Sinai began with him going after one lost sheep. He hedged in the rest of them. And he went out after that one lost sheep that led him to the burning bush. Now we come 360. Yahweh Shua is the greater Moses, the good shepherd. And he goes out to get that which is lost. And all of heaven rejoices over the one that has been returned than all the 99 that remained. Yahweh Shua is a good, the good shepherd. And they didn't get that. This is... The parable of the lost coin, the prodigal son, it's all the same. He goes after Yisrael. He only came for the lost tribe of Yisrael. We need to learn this man so then we can bring in the others. We can bring in the world. We know Ezekiel 37, 15, 20 talks about the two sticks. Yisrael comes together with Yehuda, Yisrael and her companions, Yehuda and his companions. That means those who who come along with us, who have, re who have received and accepted Yahweh Shua HaMashiach, which means you have to learn this man so you can teach this man and bring others. We must be fruitful in all things, fruitful in this word. Praise Yah. Told Yah for 62 followers now, let's continue to grow because the truth is coming from here and is unleavened and that's why it's not popular. Talking about these two sets coming together, there is no temple needed, no temple needed in following Yahweh Shua. Chapters, uh, Ezekiel, we, this is, they're getting it wrong in Ezekiel. The last eight chapters of the book gives great detail about a temple and it's about process and orders and, and all that. But there's no walls, there's no gold because the people are the gold. There's no gold in this temple. There's no gold mentioned. There's only ritual. Because you're going to have a thousand years of ritual. And, we, and then we're going to find out at the end of that thousand years whether the ritual saves you or whether the acceptance 
of Yahweh Shua HaMashiach. Well, all these things are supposed to point to that. If you get it, this is the focus of this ministry. The Erev Rav tries to get you defocused. They get you hating the so-called white man, the, so the Jews. They get you hating the yellow man. They get you hating even one another, call, identifying yourselves as black Hebrew Israelites. Yahweh never, from the beginning of the pages to the end, identified his people by a so-called color. This is a modern invention by those who hate you. The Erev Rav have named everybody. The, you don't see them. They are the strings that puppeteers all the different peoples. Some people are benefiting more than others, yes, but they're being manipulated too. Your Jewish brothers are being manipulated too. They're not your enemy. The Arab Rav is your enemy. The so-called white man is being manipulated. Now they got people from Mexico coming up and taking your jobs. They are the greater so-called minority in America now. They're being manipulated. All these peoples are being manipulated by the Erev Rav. Every war they have started. When I say these things and I say that name, they hear it. They hear it and they attack this ministry. This small ministry, their ears and eyes are open for every small thing. Fight against it. No one else is talking about them. But this ministry right here. Because it is easy to get people to come on board to your ministry and give you likes if you start hating Different peoples that don't look like you, who don't speak like you, who don't live like you. That's an easy thing, and that's what they want you to do. They did this with the, they had the Panthers, the Black Panthers hating each other. They had even the Nation of Islam hating it. people in their, in their camps fighting each other. They've always done this. They had the Hootsies and the Tootsies fighting against each other. They always infiltrate every group, and they have them hating each other. But you do not have to hate someone else to love yourself. You can love yourself and love your Jewish brothers. You can love yourself and love this, your yellow brothers and your so-called white brothers. Whatever. You don't have to subsequently hate someone else because you love yourself. And you shouldn't. Matter of fact, if you love yourself, then you, love, you can love Yahweh. And in loving Yahweh, Yahweh wants all of his image together. He's going to bring them back together. If you read Ezekiel 37 on to the end of the book. So we're going to pick up our story. This one is entitled Moshe, the prophets and Esau. Moshe, the prophets and Esau. This is video release number 48 of this Bimil Shali series. And we pick up the narrative from Luke 16. The unjust steward in verses 1 to 13. Yahweh showed himself speaking, like I said, in his own words. There was a certain rich man who had a steward and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you giving an account of your of your stewardship because you can no longer be steward? Then the steward said within himself, what will I do? Because my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I resolve what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So we got a steward who um, is doing some dirty, shady stuff, getting rich off the master's goods. And, um, and, and we see here that Yahweh is teaching the people. In this lesson now, he's incorporating his disciples. If you look, look at it in the very beginning, it says that he said his to, to his disciples. So he's trying to also teach his disciples along with the, the peoples, along with the remnant, this, this story. So we have got to understand it ourselves. We have got to internalize this because it's important. Because it's going to lead to a third story that's, that's not a parable, but a true story. It's an actual event. And here we got a man who works for the man, all right, a Hebrew that works for the government, and we see that he was not doing right. Pick it up in verse 5. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said to him, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, 
How much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. I said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commanded the unjust steward. Because Now you would think that the master would be upset, right? Well, not really. If you think of this, this is a rich master. He is so rich. He, he It's easy to steal from him because it takes a while for him to even, under, to even know, realize he's been stolen from because he has so much. Here, he could have easily had these debts defaulted on. Yet this unjust steward made sure that his master did get a profit and he got somebody whereas before he would have probably gotten defaulted on had to go through a, a lengthy, costly legal battle to get even this. So this man really did wisely. Let's see if that's true. So the master commanded the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly because the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. They're more wise on how to get by than we are. They're more wise on how to make it and how to please their master than we are. So this is a lesson to learn from the world. The steward, he plots because he knows his judgment is coming. Then he does some shrewd billing to assure that, the, that his master gets a prophet who, who's, who's paying little attention to this because he makes he's doing so much so well. But the world is wiser than us. The upright we must be upright in this world's goods, small or great, if we want to be trusted by Yahweh for his goods. At your jobs, we must do right by our supervisors, administrators, bosses, whatever you call them. We must do right by them. If you can't do right by them, how then can, we, can Yahweh trust us with his goods? You can't handle physical goods right. How are you going to handle spiritual goods? You're getting spiritual knowledge and you are here trying to get multiple wives and manipulating the word and trying to make, make, get rich off of Yahweh's word. It's not going to happen. Do righteous by your jobs. Yahweh doing service to him is the greater good. Let's go to verses. Um, but let me, let me finish this. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting home. He is he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, what will who will commit you trust in true riches? See, I just I was just saying, Yahweh sure is the true riches. We gotta be faithful in physical things. Verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Yahweh and Mammon. Remember, the scribes and Pharisees are out here listening to this. So he's going to get it, cut them right to their heart. Right now, they're only getting side blows. You are in charge of the temple process, temple access to Yahweh, but you love money. How you, which one is it? Do you love Yahweh or do you love the money? Do you love the money aspect of, of, of giving these people, these poor people, these, these marginalized people, these disenfranchised people access to Yahweh and you're getting rich off them? That's why they're poor. So this is going to get, get them to the heart. Let's, matter of fact, let's turn away from here. Let me go to Zephaniah 1.11. Zephaniah 1 of this is what Yahweh is going to see. this is what Yahweh is going to do to these people. They just love money, right? Yet they, they claim they love Yahweh. All right. These are learned men. Well, Zephaniah 1 11. Well, you inhabitants of Maktash, because all the merchants, people are cut down. All those who handle money are cut off. The mark of the beast is all about money. You having the money gives you access to living comfortably on this earth. And at the last days, it's going to be, are you going to accept the mark of the beast, which means accept the, the comfort, the easeability, the convenience of getting going out and coming in in this world, or are you going to accept Yahweh? It's going to come, to, you're going to have to do a reckoning. An absolute reckoning, one or the other. Can I hide? Can I sneakily fight? Right now, you know, it's not. We're not at that point. We are out there going to work for money, 
It's going to come to a point where you're going to have to either accept Yahweh or your job or your living or your home, your car, your bank account. It's going to come down to that. And those who are in charge of all this, and I told you, that's the area of Rav. They have different peoples that they puppet about, but it is them. That's what it is. To follow Yahweh requires no money. Come by me, receive me, buy me with no money. That's what he says. So we're going to pick up in verses 15 through 17. But let's, let me, <laughs> this is important. First, I'm going to actually back this up to verse 14. Now, the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things and they derided him. So they put him down. They're going to go and deride him because he's saying you cannot love Yahweh and money. They're going to put him down for that. They're going to go ahead and deride him public in front of the peoples. Let them know there is nothing wrong with loving money. Nothing wrong. But let's see, let's hear what Yahweh Shul's response. You are those who justify yourselves before men, but Yahweh knows your hearts. Because what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. See, they went on and, and, and tried to justify what they're doing, showing all the good things they have because of the money, all, all the so-called good things they do. And Yahweh says, those things you're bragging about, what you wear and what you have and what you live, that is abomination to Yahweh, particularly because you got it using his name. Particularly. Verse 16. The law and the prophets were until John. See, he's saying everything that you that you teaching, they had they led you to Yachanan, what you call the Baptist, which you all have accepted. They all accepted this man as a prophet. And Yahweh Shua saying they all led to him. Watch this. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. All about them, the crowd is all around him. He's saying since John the Baptist, now the kingdom has been preached. That means him. He's standing in front of them. The key is the kingdom and he's teaching it right in front of them. And they're all pressed about with the people listening. No one had called for them. Even John said, who called you to come to be to repent? No one called for them. Why they keep hounding and following this man? He ain't going to them. He's talking to the people and they are pressing all about Verse 17, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. This law is what he is living and teaching. How many times have we got? We're, we've been doing this for 40. This is the 48th release. He's been just opposing Mo, the, what their teaching of Moses is to the, to the actuality of the presentation of the law. He's been doing this. This is the 48th lesson and the abdication of it is to love you with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself here's an example he gave verse 18 whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery that's what they were doing that's what they were doing and that's what they were teaching and that's what they were misteaching and leading the misleading the people in their pulpit, pull them into the pit. This was an example he used of how they break the family down. The leaders breaking down the family. Now we're going to come to a real story. This is not a parable. This is a literal actual event speaking about two men that they know. One of them is amongst their brothers. This is the rich man and Lazarus. This is Yehonathan Dawid with here, Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians. With a lesson number 48 of the Bimila Tash Shali series. Bimila Tash Shali means in his own words. This one is entitled Moshe, the prophets, and Esau. Here we go. In verse 19 of chapter 16 of Luke's account. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores and who was laid at the gate. So now, talking about two people, one rich, one poor. Now he's going to get right down to the cut. He's getting right to the heart. We're just making it black and white. One rich, one poor. And you know both of these men. 
This man is so the poor man is so bad off. He he had to be picked up and laid and carried to the gate by other poor people who just they couldn't give him anything. They put him in the right spot to get something. They put him at a gate where they knew a wealthy rich man would come through every time to to worship. A man who would go to the temple to praise and worship walk had to walk past this man. A man who would teach the law had to walk past this man. They put him in a spot where he can probably get something. So they laid him at the gate, it says in verse 20. He was laid at the gate by other poor friends and family. Verse 21, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This man was not only poor, but was medically maligned. He would have been happy just to eat the crumbs that fell from this rich man's table. That was just on his clothes. And I was eating snacks in here. And I'm, I'm, for two days in a row now, I've been finding pumpkin seeds lying around. That fell off my clothes. I've been finding, I found about four or five pumpkin seeds about, about the area. That fell off of my clothes. This man would have been happy to eat. Then that couldn't sustain him. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that because it's going to come back full circle. If he was, even if this rich man was gracious enough, if you will say, to let Lazarus get the crumbs from him, that wouldn't have sustained him. That wouldn't have made him healthy and, and, and everything. But still, he would have been glad just to have that. I'm going to tell you why I'm bringing that up. Verse 22. So was that the beggar died and was carried to the, by the Malachim to Abraham's bosom. Oh, the rich man also died and was buried. Now see, one went carried to Abraham's bosom, another one was buried. See the, the stark difference? Wow. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Look at this. We got we know all souls belong to Yahweh. All souls go to him. So we got this place, Hades, that has two different parts. They both went to Hades, but one is a is is a righteous part and one is an unrighteous part. And 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 Yahweh Shua is using Abraham because they said they are Abraham's seed, they've never been in bondage. That tells you right there they're from Esau. Because Esau was never in bondage. They they sub subjected to the Hebrews for a period of time, but they were never in bondage by anyone. And they are of Abraham's seed because they come from Yisak. Jacob is their brother. So Esau is from Abraham's seed. And they said that's, that's who they are. And we know that the Edomites ruled over us. The Romans put Edomites over us. So this is why y'all sure really got their attention talking about to them about somebody they knew. And then he's got them hooked to listen by saying that he that Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. That's their father, right? That's what they said. That's their father. He goes to Abraham's bosom. But and then, and then the one that he disdained went to Hades, the hell, the bottom part. All right, so here we go. Verse 22, and being in torment, so now verse 24. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I am tormented in this flame. There you go. For a circle. Lazarus would like to have had the crumbs that fell from his clothing. Just the crumbs. That wouldn't have sustained him, though. It wouldn't have sustained him. And now here he is saying, just let Lazarus dip the tip of his finger in the water. That may just get a few drops of water from his fingertip. That wouldn't even sustain him in hell. He said he's been tormented by flames. Even if Lazarus did it, it wouldn't do anything for him. It wouldn't help him. These dirty dog demons do not want to repent. They just want to have their flesh comfortable. They want to live now. And this is what is the heart of Esau. Just like he had that red pot of stew. He wants now. And then he, we got that blessing from his father, Yisak. Yisak gave him the promise of having wealth now on the earth. But he says you're going to get it by the sword though. And to this day, that's how he's doing it. He is has his fatness now. This is why when Yahweh returns, he said he is going to be the first, last, and the last first. He's going to turn it back around. The end of Esau's world is the beginning of, of Jacob's world. This is why Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians is not very popular. What I'm saying here is tight. 
but it's right. It's true and it's not popular. Don't waste your time hating Jews and white men and stop identifying yourself as black when Yahweh never identified you as that. That You are a Hebrew. And if you're not, you're one of the companions of the Hebrews who believes in his son, Yahweh Shua HaMashiach. So this is what we teach and it is unleavened in truth. We receive Yahweh Shua who is the only means to Yahweh. There is no other way. There is no other way. So now this man, this Edomite, now he wants to go ahead and, and see what he's going to try to do now. Bargain, because he's not going to get comforted. Verse 26. Besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to there cannot, nor can those pass from there to us. Yahweh keeps covenant. Esau made a covenant with the devil. And he got what he wanted right now. And it, and that's going to be, it can't be changed. Yahweh made a covenant with Jacob only. He only, Yahweh does not have multiple lovers in his bed. He only has us. Now we need to go be fruitful and bring others in. But he only has a covenant with us. And Yahweh, Yahweh keeps covenant. And that can't, that's a gulf that's fixed. Verse 27. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father. That you will send him to my father's house. Ha <laughs> ha. Because I have five brothers that may testify to them. Lest they also come to this place of torment. Wow. Y'all should let these, these scribes and Pharisees know. Hey. And there's five more of y'all. Five more of you. Who need to hear what I'm laying down right now. Five more of you. This one died. You got five more who's fat. Increased with goods. Through Fake and forgery and stealing and robbing these people here who's pressing for the kingdom. These people right here who are here to hear my word. Verse 29. Abraham said to him, Oh, I love this. This is once amongst my favorite statements in the entire Bible, so-called Bible. They have Moshe and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father. So Yahweh was saying, wait a minute. Why should I go ahead and send this uh tell your brothers about this? They they got Moshe. They, they, they go to the temple every week. They got Moshe and the prophets. Everything they need to know is right there in the Torah, in the prophets, in the Psalms. They have everything. <laughs> Here we go, verse 30. He said, No, Father. But if one comes from them from the dead, they will repent. You know what he's saying? Yeah, they got the truth, but that's not even enough. They need to have signs and wonders. And what is going to fool the world, Revelation tells us, that the devil's going to do signs and wonders. So they, his brothers need signs and wonders, right? That's what they need to do to be to repent. They can't have just the truth. They got the truth already. They got the Torah. They got the prophets, the Psalms. But that's not enough. They need somebody to come up from the dead like it's Halloween. And <laughs> what does Yahushua say? But he said to him, if they do not Shema, they do not hear Moshe and the Nabaim, the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Wow. Now that's a hit in the head because that is prophecy. Because Yahushua rose from the dead and to this day, they still don't believe. Because for 40 years, they still try to maintain that temple access to Yahweh, even though he rent the veil, even though the light of the candle kept going out, even though the, the, the goat to the left kept on being the one chosen every time and it wouldn't come back, it was red. I mean, no sign, every sign showed that Yahweh was not cooperating, he was not co-opting, not co-signing on their temple access to him. And, they, and Yahweh showed rose from the dead. And they didn't believe. They didn't. This what this man, the greatest of all prophets, said: somebody can come from the dead, and they won't believe. And they didn't. Those five men followed after this rich man to Hades. The bad part. And they're gonna rise to judgment because Yahweh Shua says the last will be first, and the first will be last. Wow. You know, I, I uh, that's the lesson. I think you better 
not try to be so much in getting rich now. If you is not not a sin to be rich, but that should not be your goal. Your goal, what's in your life, is to wake up and uh, and to be well pleasing to Yahweh. Let me tell you about these demons here. What did he say about them in Malachi three? Look, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Yahweh sure says until he said from the beginning until John was Moses and the prophets taught. And here we go right here, Malachi one three one. All that stuff before John the Baptist, his cousin, Yahweh Shua's cousin, pointed to his cousin. And then his cousin pointed to him. And then now you got to receive him to this day. And what they call the, the 5th of November, 2023, the year of their Lord. I teach the unleavened word of Yahweh Shua, nothing else. Verse 2. And the, and the sovereign whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight. Look, he is coming, says Yahweh Sabaot. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? Because he is like a refiner's fire and like launderous soap. Oh, he's going to burn and purge and clean. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer Yahweh an offering in righteousness. They're going to be purified, all right. Because on that thousand years uh, that, that Ezekiel talks about in Ezekiel 37, you're going to have purified priests leading out into temple access to Yahweh. Then the offering of Yehuda in Jerusalem will be pleasant to Yahweh as in the days of old, as in former years. So after two sticks come together, the offering is going to be purified. And remember, we're going to then teach the rest of the world. And I will come near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says Yahweh Sabaoth. See, he named all the people that the scribes and Pharisees call sinners, the marginalized people. These are the remnant. Okay, he's going to purge out the sorcerers and adulterers and perjurers. That's them. That's the, the, that's the temple leaders because they did evil and wickedness to the orphans and the aliens okay and those imprisoned see the distinction between the two people verse 6 because I am Yahweh I do not change therefore you are not consumed O sons of Jacob Yahweh see that gulf is unchanging Yahweh keeps covenant and does not change yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them Return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahweh Sabaoth. But you said, in what way will we return? Will a man rob Yahweh? You have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. See how they, because they love money. They have stolen from Yahweh and become fat and rich and increased with goods. And those are the kind that walk past Lazarus, fat and greedy. Verse 9, you are cursed with a curse. Those of you who handle money. That we read about in Zephaniah 111. There that bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. There may be food in my house. And try me now in this says Yahweh Sabaoth. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. And pour out for you such a blessing. That there will be room enough to receive it. It will not even be room enough. Yahweh will bless them even more. If you just stop loving Mammon. You can't love him and Mammon. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor will the vine fail to bear fruit because you in the, for you in the field says Yahweh Sabaoth. Y'all say Yahweh of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed because you will be a delightful land says Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh of hosts. All the peoples. Yahweh hosts all the peoples. Not just the Hebrew peoples. Yahweh brings us together. Stop fighting apart. Stop segmenting and hating other peoples. Yeah, see how he cursed them for not receiving the aliens. That's what he says in verse 5. Now in verse 13 of Malachi 3. Your words have been harsh against me, says Yahweh. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve Yahweh. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked as mourners before Yahweh Sabaoth? So now we call the proud blessed for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt Yahweh and go free. They don't see no profit in serving Yahweh. These scribes and Pharisees, they see profit in profit. 
and monetary gain. Why should they believe in him? They got the Romans over them. So let's just go ahead and make profit. Let and we'll serve the Romans and make profit uh, by the Romans by doing what? By robbing the the remnant. Mm, mm, mm. Verse sixteen. Then those who feared Yahweh spoke to one another, and Yahweh listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear Yahweh and who meditate on his name. They took the name of Yahweh away. They only wanted it uttered once a year on the Day of Atonement. And they only murmured it then. They took the name from the people from, of Yahweh from the people on the street. The common man, they, they forgot their name and were not allowed to speak it. That's what these temple leaders did, the Edomites. They will be mine, says Yahweh Sabaoth, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So, Yahweh's going to make us his jewels. Right now, we're all on the back of the bus. Disenfranchised, marginalized, they call us niggas. They, they, they just, we are the worst. We are a byword. But Yahweh's going to make us his jewels. And they'll always see. Verse 18. Then. You will again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves Yahweh and one who does not serve him. Verse 18, that was a clicker. Because right here, right now, they got it twisted. Those who look like they are the, the, the bad ones are the good ones, and those who look like the good ones are on top are the bad ones. You're going to discern them. Right now, they don't discern. They don't discern who Yahweh's true people are. Right now, Yahweh's true Chosen seed, covenant seed people are not recognized. They don't think it looks like the melanin rich man, the melanin rich woman. That's why Yahweh says, then you will again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves you and one who does not serve him. Who's serving him? Who's serving him? Who's not serving him now? Oh, I'm telling that's Malachi 3. But I want to finish off. I want to read Psalm 40 and 7. I praise Yahweh for today's lesson. I bless your name, Father. Psalm 40 and 7 says, Then I said, Look, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. All of this, all of your ministry, all of your ministry should testify of Yahweh sure. If it's not doing that, it's not important. What's going on in the Middle East is important, yes. Being a uh, 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 health conscious, yeah, I go to the gym. Uh, learning how to balance your budget and, and money and all that, that's important. But nothing, none of those things are to eternal life. You know, none of these things are to eternal life. We need to have a ministry that, 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 that is founded on Yahweh Shua. And the scroll of the book, it testifies on him. Yahweh Shua says, you will see uh, angels from heaven coming down, ascending and descending from the Son of Man. That's the, the X chromosome. Everything goes through him. Everything. Nothing else matters. Bless Yahweh, Yahweh. I bless your name. I love you, Yahweh. May I be well pleasing to you, dear Father. May this ministry be well pleasing to you. May those who have an ear to hear, dear Father, I bless your name for the 60 plus followers. I told you, I do want this to grow. In your name, you be lifted up. Not me. You be lifted up, dear Father. I bless your name. Let them hear this word. Until next week, Shalom Adakim, Yisrael, Yohanathan Dawit, with you here. Peace be on you.